Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, well, I'm learning to blend prosthetics so that I can win the farmer's market Halloween booth decorating and costume contest because I'm super going to win. If you're local, you should vote for me. <laughs> um, but I thought now would be a good time to show you guys some of the crafts and things that I do that don't necessarily involve me having a ton of males or being able to hatch. Because if you remember from my last video, currently I don't have males right now, except for button quail, which are kept inside in very small numbers. Um, so I'm gonna show you some ways that you can capitalize on maybe extras you have in your fridge or put away some extras. Um, in the freezer for a rainy day or a rainy season, like right now, when I can't be hatching and capitalizing on my falconer market or my dog training market or my dog treat market because I don't have a lot of meat to process either. So let me show you guys some of my favorite crafts. So first we have quail claw earrings. I just took some quail claws and threw them in the dehydrator and I added some jewelry bits to the end so they can be earrings. You just kind of let them dehydrate however they're going to. I got it right next to my dehydrator which is doing dog jerky right now. But yeah, one way you can capitalize. They look really cool and creepy as earrings for Halloween. Hey guys, I'm in my kitchen. I can show you what the quail claw earrings look like. I'm super wearing, I'm probably gonna wear these, but I might wear skull earrings. I'm not sure, that's what I'm gonna show you guys next. But here's what quail claw earrings look like. You can also take these and while they're fro like semi-frozen or just raw, glue a rock or stone or whatever you want in the middle of the claws and dehydrate it that way and then you also can make them necklaces. I don't have these with rocks in them because they're a little bit heavy for earrings but um, you can also make necklaces out of them. Super super fun. And keychains. I've also done flip the bird keychains where the middle finger sticking up. Those are a little bit harder to dehydrate perfectly right um, but they make really really good keychains or necklaces. So when you go to process your quail save the feet, put them in the freezer, and that's three different ways you can use the feet. That would normally go to waste. All right, next we have quail skull earrings. So you can do these several different ways, but like I said before, when you go to process your quail, I always save the head, the wings, and the feet. Um, and I use them a lot for crafts. So the skulls, I have customers that like to just purchase them in bulk or I use them for different things. You can put the claw around the skull and make necklaces. You can make earrings just with the plain skull or what I decided to do this year was cover them in paint and then glitter and then spray Mod Podge over top of it to seal in the glitter and make them into earrings. So it's a couple different ways you can use your skulls. Um, just a fun creative Halloween thing. They're also really cool on display from a Halloween booth in mason jars. Um, it gets a lot of people to stop and look and ask questions and then there's a conversation starter right there about how you don't waste any parts of the quail. And I'm really hoping this isn't too, too scary. Um, and people will still talk to me on Saturday. Last but not least, I'm just gonna show you these. These aren't necessarily Halloween themed, although you could um, add different uh, jewelry bits to make it Halloween themed. But along with the concept of saving parts of your bird, when you process them, I save the wing feathers. And sometimes if I really like the feather patterns, I will save the feathers and make all kinds of different feather earrings. If you just look up on Pinterest feather earrings, you can get tons of different ideas and try. This is just one of my favorite. I like the little fan clippies, but there's another idea. 
Okay, so to wrap up this video, <laughs> thanks for watching me and my craziness. If you've seen like any of my videos, you know that this is just a totally me thing. Um, so if you want information on YouTube, but also something that's like probably gonna make you laugh or go, huh? This is the right channel for you. <laughs> but um, I wanted to just kind of sum up. If you're in a situation like me, where all of a sudden you find yourself, you can't really have males anymore. Um, and you're like, oh my gosh, there went three different sources of income or more. Now, um, I, what I would tell you is diversify from the jump, diversify your income when it comes to homesteading and quail specifically, like from the jump, diversify your income. Like I sell parts of the quail to people. I sell jewelry. I sell live birds, uh, ranging from chicks to laying hens. And I sell to dog trainers. I sell to falconers. I have sold to reptile owners. Um, I'm constantly, like now I can't really hatch. Oh my nose it just I can't really hatch like I used to. So that affects my hatching program. It affects having males for dog training and males for falconers and things like that. But I can still make jewelry and sell to people that use the different pieces of the quail. Um, and I can still order in eggs to hatch chicks. So try and find different ways and unique ways that set you apart so you can sell quail in lots of different ways. And right now I sell a lot of eating eggs. So I kept all my hens and I get tons of eating eggs and we eat a ton of eating eggs. So um, it works out great. But this video is just to kind of show you some different halloween -y jewelry type fun things that you can do. And I will make more videos later on different stuff I'm doing that don't necessarily involve males. This involves things you might have saved in your freezer or things you can save for the future and put in your freezer. So if you got males now and you got extras and you're raising quail for meat and eggs, make sure you save those pieces because I'm telling you, if something happens like what happened to me, you can still find ways to still keep the hens and find ways to pay for the feed that are just different than you might've thought. So hopefully this helps somebody out there and I will catch you guys on the flip side.